Chris and I have been trying to work with enums for the past few weeks, and the sum of this talk is enums four ways. We're going to present four ways of how we were handling these enums, and uh, this is not a finished work. So if anyone has any advice on how to, for us to move on, please find me later and let me know. So the motivation for this work is we usually have an enum and then separate, we have a separate function. We go as a jump table on every single value and we return a string. Then sometimes someone comes, adds a, another enum value. He forgets to add the string for it in that function. That function happens to be in a separate file sometimes. So here you go, you got a bug. Okay. So we wanted to have this a way to express enums in a way that explicitly shows the developer uh, intent. First method, boost preprocessor. On the left is all the back work. On the right, you'll see what, how the library this would be used. This is nothing new by any chance. You might have seen this through the work of Quicknear and Anton Bakken. And basically, we adapted that work so that we end up with a std array that has all the values of our strings, and we can, at compile time, get the string value from any enum. So that was method one. Problems with it is it depends on contiguous numbers. We managed to put a seed in there. That's the 99 all, all the way in the top here. And, but if you don't have a contiguous number, that array logic doesn't really work. So uh, not a great way to do business. Also, we hided some of the implementation in namespaces, which means if you want to put this enum inside the class, that won't compile. OK, let's try something else. Pretty function. So same layout, the usage on the right, the gory details on the left. We're going to use some static, uh, static recursion, and we're going to go over all the enums, and we're going to use some pretty function voodoo in here and get exactly the name of that enum. OK, sounds good, except that it requires this test enum count for that library to work. Oops, here. And also, it's really namespace dependent so and compiler dependent. Hook up a separate compiler on this one, you'll get different results. All right, let's try something else. We're going to create the values as types. So we have this operate, operator underscore s and operator underscore c. We're going to create an integer and a, car, and a car star. And we're going to do these constar, uh, const expert autos where we are just declaring these values as static values. Sounds good, except that it's not really an enum. Also, you have to set the value explicitly at every single enum, which makes it no auto increment. Can we put auto increment there? E yes, we can. There's this high level voodoo that we got from Philip Rosen. He's got this const expert counter that basically will give you, every time we call get next, it's going to give us a new number. And that's at, com at compile time. Great. But we just also, f with the auto increment, we lost the ability to put specific values at these numbers. It's also not really an enum. These are the four methods we've used. Those are the people whose work we've looked at. And thank you very much. <laughs>